Cluckingham Palace is really coming along. In the last video, I built out the coop framing, nesting boxes, windows, and stuff like that. All right, let's keep going. We're picking up about halfway through day seven of building the chicken coop. The structure is pretty much done, so now I'm gonna start dressing up the outside. The look of the coop will match the look of the workshop building, so I'll be using lap siding. I began by adding trim to all the corners of the building. This just gets attached with finish nails. Then I worked one side at a time, adding all the detail trim around the doors, windows, and nesting boxes. During construction of the workshop, there were a lot of leftover pieces of cement board lap siding. Instead of just ending up in the landfill, any pieces that were worth saving were stored away for a project just like this. I pulled down all the siding and brought it closer to the coop. Before adding the siding, I needed to punch and frame the pass-through for the chickens. I made the opening 10 inches wide, 12 inches tall, and centered it on the wall. It's raised up a few inches from the floor of the coop, so it won't be blocked by the tray on the inside. When attaching the trim, I used short screws from the backside so there wouldn't be anything pokey in a high traffic area. When installing siding, the first thing you have to do is add a starter strip so the bottom piece of the siding flares out like the rest. I use my table saw to rip strips an inch and a half wide, then attach them to the very bottom of the sheathing. Then I could start throwing up those strips. I used as many full strips as I could and cut little pieces to fill the gaps left over. It's nice that I had the workshop siding as a reference because it showed that I needed to have an inch and a quarter overlap. I cut any notches necessary to fit around the trim. After doing a few rows, I figured I should just do one side at a time. So I focused on this short side. Normally, when installing siding, you should not use finish nails. It's supposed to be something with a larger head size. But the reason I used finish nails is because the framing on the inside of the coop will be mostly exposed. With normal nails through OSB siding, you can't really do much with the pointy end on the inside. But with finish nails, I can easily bend the inside portion to make it safe for the chickens. At the very top, I made sure to get the siding as close to the roof as possible, so there won't be any way for a predator to get into the coop portion. It was a little tricky cutting the pieces at the very top. I managed to get them cut and secured well. For the front side of the coop, I added a starter strip and made cuts so the rows of siding lined up with the other sides. Some of the pieces of siding were tucked up pretty high. With the fascia board for the roof already installed, it was difficult or near impossible to properly nail it in. So instead I opted for construction adhesive to secure those pieces. This had to be done for three of the four sides of the coop. All the siding for the coop is on. I think it turned out great. I'll go through later and fill in all the nail holes and seams before painting.
Unfortunately for this project, the forecast showed the next two days were going to be rainy. I wanted to paint the whole thing next, so instead of letting it get soaked by the rain, I covered as much of it with tarps as I could. This won't be an issue once the roof is on and it's all painted. The rain cleared up, so I pulled off the tarps and got back to work. It hardly ever rains here, but there was some more rain coming up soon. So instead of painting the entire structure, I switched gears and focused on finishing the roof. I caulked all the seams, screw heads, and knot holes in the trim around the roof. This needs to be painted before adding the roof flashing so it's protected. So after waiting 30 minutes for the caulking to cure, I rolled the trim with ultra pure white paint with a satin finish, the same as the workshop. When the paint was dry, I could put on the flashing. Just like all things with roofs and things on the outside of buildings, you start on the bottom and layer things on top as you work up the vertical. This roof is steeper than most, so it was a little difficult getting the flashing fully pressed into the edge of the roof. I made some cuts so the flashing wraps around the corners instead of just stopping at the edges. I continued adding flashing around the entire edge of the roof, making sure that any pieces on the slopes were layered on top of the pieces below it. The flashing here may not be perfect, but it looks good and will work great for this chicken coop. For the inside corner of the L, I needed to add some sort of flashing so water runs down the seam of the roof. A normal W-shaped flashing is what you're supposed to use for a valley like this, but they only come in 10 foot lengths and I only need about 3 or 4 feet. So I opt for a cheaper method with a roll of aluminum tacked down across the length. I spray painted it black so whatever part is visible will blend in with everything else. Now I'm not going to add tar paper to the roof. It's a very small roof, it's a chicken coop, it wouldn't be visible, and the rolls of tar paper are quite large, and I'd only use a fraction of it. So with those reasons and the extra cost, I decided to nix the tar paper. Alright, before laying down shingles, I laid a starter strip along the entire edge. This is tacky, so it stays down once placed. It also helps the first row of shingles stay down. Okay, time for shingles. The first layer went on pretty quick because it's such a short distance. Just like the starter strip, I nailed all these by hand. Now the next layer needs to be staggered so the seams don't line up. I cut a shingle in half because I used it as the first piece of the next row. There are better ways to do this, but this is a very small roof and I'm trying to maximize the purchase materials. Then I went back to a full sheet for the first piece of the third row. I kept that pattern going as I worked my way up. Just as I switched to the other side of the roof, it started to rain a bit, though not enough to stop working. I kept going until I ran out of shingles. I thought that three packages of shingles would be enough, but I had to go get one more. On this day, I only had a few hours to work, so I got back to work on the roof. I used the last bag to finish layering the shingles all the way to the peak. Then for the very tippy top of the roof, 
by attached ridge caps. These also went on the hip edge that leads up to the center point. One box of ridge caps has 20 linear feet of caps, and I need 24 linear feet. So with one box, I ran out just short of the finish line and had to go get another box for the next day. And with that, the roof is done, and this chicken coop is that much closer to being up and running. There are a lot of elements to building this thing, but each step is more important to making sure that my girls will be safe and comfortable in their future home. And it's important that the boss lady is happy with it as well. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. Alright, you guys gotta go. <laughs> this isn't gonna work out. <laughs>